Okay, welcome to uh, our next video, which is going to be based on section 12.3. That's the section of Fourier cosine and Fourier sine series. Uh, as you can see, what we have here, I've already written the general form of a Fourier series, uh, a0 over 2 plus the summation of an cosine and plus bn sine. Uh, I've actually written out the a0, an, and bn terms, uh, the general forms, the general formulas for solving the coefficients a0, an, a an, and bn. Uh, I want to point out one thing that uh, this is a naught based on the Fourier series, which which encompasses the a naught over two as your first term, not a naught by itself. Uh, we've talked about that in the four, but the Fourier series is a naught. The first what distinguishes a Fourier series versus another series, uh, the series that we established from the very beginning a couple lessons ago, is that a Fourier series, the first term has the a naught over two. Um, keep in mind that if this was not a naught over 2, it wouldn't be the Fourier series anymore. It would be very close, but it wouldn't be the exact series. Uh, on the discussion of uh, odd functions and even functions, I want you to realize that those functions that you see for Fourier cosine and Fourier sine are just derivations of these original uh, equations for the coefficients, uh, but it's based on the definitions of odd and even functions and what happens when you have a product of odd and even functions. And let me just give you an example of that. If I'm dealing with an odd function, f of x, and I'm showing you this so you don't have to memorize, you don't feel like you have to memorize more equations than necessary. So if f of x is odd, then I want you to watch what happens to a naught. If you take a naught and you use the regular formula that you used to use in this one up here, you're going to get 1 over p, negative p to p, f of x dx. And the definition of an odd function is that from negative p to p of that function, if it's odd, then this whole piece right here will be zero. And that's defined to you in that theorem uh, on page, oh, I forget what page that is. Um, I think it's page 637. Um, so this is going to wind up being zero, and then your an winds up being equal to 1 over p, integral from negative p to p, you're going to have f of x times the cosine of n pi over p x dx. Once again, if f of x is odd, f of x is going to be odd, we know that the cosine function is an even function, so what happens is you get an odd function, a product of an odd function with an even function, and as we've said in class before, is that an odd function times an even function gives you an odd function. So what happens is you have the product winds up being an odd function. So the integral from negative p to p, once again, of an odd function gives you zero. This whole integral is going to wind up giving you zero, which means a n is equal to zero. What that means is then you're, the only coefficient that winds up being left over is the b sub n, which is equal to 1 over p, integral negative p to p of f of x, sine n pi over px dx. And I'm showing you this to make you realize that this bn is not going to go to zero because you're going to have an odd function multiplied with another odd function. And the, the product of the two odd functions actually gives you an even function. So by definition of an even function, this negative p to p, the integral, you still have your 1 over p, but the integral of negative p to p turns into 2 times 0 to p of this same function, f of x sine of n pi over p x dx. Now I want you to realize that you don't have to memorize, you don't actually have to memorize this new a naught and a n and realize those go to zero and memorize this new b n function. What you need to realize is that this is an odd function, understand the properties of odd functions, but you still go back and use the original definitions for the coefficients of a Fourier uh, series. So then, what I'm getting at is for an odd function, your f of x reduces to uh, the summation of the bn, right? bn, which is the n equals 1 to infinity of bn sine of n pi over p x, where all you have to, where bn is now equal to 2 over p integral from 0 to p f of x sine of n pi over p x dx. And just as you would anything else, you would uh, some of the other coefficients, uh, as before, you would solve this bn by understanding your f of x, knowing what your p is, 
and solving the integral. Similarly, for let's go ahead and do the uh, for a oh let's see here. Well, let me try this for how about for an even function? Let's see if I can squeeze this in here for an even function f of x. I may not have room to actually write the whole thing out, but for an even function, notice that your bn, that means your f of x is going to be even, sine of x, this sine of n pi over px is odd, your bn is going to disappear, because you're going to have an even times an odd, which the product of those two functions gives you an odd function. And if you have an odd function, when f of x is even, if your total integrand is an odd function, then your negative p to p integral is going to wind up being zero, bn is going to disappear. But, your a naught will not disappear, nor your an, because you will have an even function from negative p to p, which, oh, by the way, you can use the definition of 2 times 0 to p, and here's the same thing. You'll have an even function times an even function. You can go 2 times 0 to p. What that boils down to is that your a naught, when f of x is even, that your a naught is going to be 2 over p integral 0 to p f of x dx and your a n will be 2 over p 0 to p f of x cosine n pi over p x dx. So you understand here that the where, where this is really 1 over p multiplied by 2 times the, this integral here where that comes from the whole properties of uh, even functions. Once again the uh, properties of even and odd functions on page 637. To put that into practice, you can take a function, which is taken right out of the book, by the way. This is example, I believe this is example 2 on page 638. Um, you put this into practice, you have your function f of x. We want to sh show, expand this in terms of a Fourier series. Now what that means is we're going to be either doing a Fourier series, cosine or sine series. And the reason that is because we can determine that f of x which this is the graph here for this f of x that's given here. Uh, f of x is uh, based on this curve being the same as this curve except reflected about the origin. You can say that f of x is then uh, an odd function. And since f of x is odd, we can say that a naught, and I'm just going to reprove this, 1 over p from negative p to p f of x dx is going to be equal to zero because you have an odd function being integrated from negative p to p. And if you need to make more sense of that, you can say the area underneath this curve from negative pi to pi is going to be equal to the area underneath this curve, and they cancel out because one's positive, one's negative. Oh, and by the way, since our interval usually goes from negative p to p, we can establish then that since we're going from negative pi to pi, that p is actually equal to pi. So similarly, we can say that a n is from 1 over p, or 1 over pi, uh, from negative p to p. But notice I'm not plugging in the p values because I don't need to because I want to establish this first. f of x cosine n pi over p x dx. And notice once again, f of x is odd. Odd times an even function gives you an odd function. The integral from, of an odd function from negative p to p will once again give you zero. What that means is that we're dealing with a, a bn, which is equal to 1 over, I'm going to go ahead and put pi, because that's my p, from negative pi to pi of f of x times the sine of, oh, let's say, n pi over p, which is going to cancel pi over pi, which is going to be nx dx. So then our Fourier series, f of x, equals... The summation, normally it would be a naught over 2 summation of a n, but these are both coefficients are going to be 0, so what winds up being left over is your n equals 1, your b n sine of n x, because once again the pi over p cancels, um, where your b n is going to be equal to all of this stuff right in here. And since the problem itself winds up giving you just a summation. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to actually calculate the, the coefficients here, but have you realized that this bn is this bn here, which, oh, by the way, bn reduces to 1 over pi, whoops, 
that's 1 over pi, multiplied by 2 times 0 to pi f of x sine of nx dx. Notice where this 2 is coming from. This is an important step because you do have to actually, if, this, if, the, if the function is odd or even, you do have to establish whether or not this this right here will reduce to this because this right here oftentimes will be defined and will give you a value whereas this sometimes will cancel itself out. Bottom line is if it's an even function and you have the product of two even functions then make sure that you actually change this negative pi to pi to uh, two times the integral from zero to pi. And your final answer will look just like that. It'll look uh, f of x equals summation of n equals one to infinity uh, we can go, if you want to write the whole thing in, you can. Let's go ahead and write it as 2 over pi integral from 0 to pi f of x sine of nx dx multiplied by the sine nx. Uh, what, where is it? Right here, sine nx. Understanding, hopefully, that uh, this integral right here just gives you a value in terms of n. Okay? And that will conclude this video for uh, Fourier cosine and sine series. You can do the same kind of thing, establishing, uh, this would be, by the way, called a Fourier sine series since, since the function itself is odd, and what you're, what's left over is the, is the sine portion of the, of the original Fourier series. If you had an a naught and the an, and these two did not really go to zero, and the bn went to zero, and what you would have left over is a cosine in your actual final series, then, then it would be known as a Fourier cosine series. We will see you on the next lesson.